uh, what we just talked about, you, uh, um, I'll show you how to build a ray tracer in uh, using Zero. Ray tracing is a, a nice exercise, uh, even if you do it in Bash or whatever language you want. I'm going to show how to use uh, Zero and to learn to use Zero modules specifically. Uh, so Zero um, is a uh, you've seen already in previous talks, is parameterized on an environment that establishes the requirement for the effect to run, an error channel, and an out channel. Mentally, you can think of a Z of REA as a function from R to an either of E or A. And to be able to run a Z of REA, I need to satisfy the requirements. So when um, a Z effect doesn't require anything specific, then R would be an any. But R can be in general, uh, for example, a configuration case class or a database access module or, uh, or console. Um, and we will see how uh, using this uh, um, uh, effect type we can uh, build our ray tracing. So what is the um, problem we're trying to solve with ray tracing? We have a scene, uh, a world made of uh, spheres, planes, with a light source that uh, sheds some light on the objects, so we have some uh, uh, incident rays. These rays get uh, reflected by the shapes, and uh, uh, they acquire the color of the shapes, and then they uh, end up hitting the camera. And uh, uh, we have a canvas in front of the camera, which is our observation point, that um, color the pixels of the camera. So uh, we want to uh, simulate uh, this this effect and produce the final view of the world as from the point of view uh, of the camera. Um, now we have two options here. One is to uh, compute all the possible rays of the world and then uh, filter only the ones uh, seen by the camera. Or we can go the other way around, so have uh, rays outgoing from the camera, see if they hit any objects <coughs> in the world, and then reverse engineer those rays, so see how they uh, originated in the first place. And this uh, is a, a much cheaper approach. So we will use, uh, we will show um, how to use this uh, second approach for our ray tracing problem. Uh, so the first thing we have to model is uh, uh, the concept of array. So array is a set of points with uh, an origin and a direction. And this is uh, immediately modeled uh, in uh, this case class. And then we have to be able to uh, transform our rays and uh, also the shapes because we, have, uh, we are in a 3D space, so we have to be able to rotate, uh, translate, scale our shapes. So we introduce our first module, with, uh, which deals with uh, uh, transformations. Transformations of this type are called affine transformations. And we want to be able to apply an affine transformation to, to a vector or to a point, and to be able to compose two transformations. So here we define our first module. Uh, a module is uh, uh, defined by a service parameterized on a generic R inside the, the companion object of the uh, module. And uh, the algebra is defined uh, uh, in this uh, uh, generic in R, essentially. Um, the next thing we do is uh, we have a trait that is the trait defining the module with a vowel that by convention has the same name as the module, just with a uh, lowercase and points to uh, the type is uh, uh, of a service where R is any. So to give a completely uh, generic uh, uh, support for the environment. And the last thing we have to do is to, um, uh, we generically do, is provide an accessor object. So uh, typically an accessor object uh, uh, looks like this, uh, and it uses this accessm method that uh, Zio provides. And it's a way to, um, uh, introduce a dependency on the module itself that we are defining. Um, so uh, actually, um, uh, if we use Zio macros, we can have the generation of the accessor object completely uh, done for us, so we don't have to bother from, uh, about it. And uh, just focus on the definition of the algebra of the module we are defining. So uh, with this, we are uh, already able to define uh, um, uh, programs that rely on this algebra. Uh, we don't even know yet how to implement this uh, uh, fine transformation module, but we are able to write already programs that rely on its, uh, on its logic. And suppose we define also another module that logs things uh, following the same pattern, we can already build uh, business logic based on this approach. And uh, mm, uh, the nice thing of the contravariance of R 
makes the envir environment infer or the, or the dependencies for us and mixing uh, the dependencies uh, in, the, in the final resulting environment. And the live implementation of the uh, transformation module will, uh, um, uh, is pretty simple because if uh, um, we consider that uh, uh, if we map every vector to uh, um, a column matrix where the last uh, value is a zero and a point to a column matrix where the last value is a one, then all we need are just uh, matrix multiplication. And with this, uh, uh, if we back uh, at the implementation of our uh, AT module with uh, uh, matrix multiplication, we uh, are able to provide generic transformations that uh, can rotate, translate, and scale our objects. So um, going back to the ray tracing problem, the next thing we have to model is a camera. So a camera is the, uh, completely modeled by uh, the point that is observing the world from, the direction that is uh, towards which it is looking, and uh, uh, the up vector that uh, uh, caters for the rotation of the camera, the horizontal resolution, the vertical resolution, and a visual angle that uh, the camera covers. So with all uh, uh, these parameters, we are able to define uh, a camera, and uh, uh, the only dependency we have for this is this uh, transformation module. Um, the next thing we can do is uh, um, define the shapes that will populate our, uh, our world. So um, the idea here is to define some canonical shapes. So we define a canonical sphere, which is a sphere of ray one, centered in the uh, origin, and a canonical plane, which is the horizontal plane. And uh, any other um, sphere and plane would be just the, the canonical sphere plus the transformation we need to apply to that sphere to uh, produce the final sphere I have. And the same I do for the plane. So for example, how do we create a generic sphere with a given center and a radius and a given material? I have to ask my um, AT module to provide me a transformation that scales everything by the radius. I will uh, uh, produce a transformation that translates by the center. I compose them and I put the composed transformation inside the, inside the sphere. Here. And uh, uh, with that, we're able to uh, model an arbitrary sphere. We can do the same for the plane. And uh, uh, at the end, we, um, we can put this and, and build our uh, arbitrary uh, world. And uh, um, all this needs only the AT module. So we don't uh, uh, carry along the implementation of the AT module, but we just abstract on the, on the <coughs> algebra of the module for uh, the programs we're writing so far. Um, now, the next thing we want to do is to um, produce all the colors as seen from the, from the canvas, in front of our camera. So, um, this concern leads us to the definition of another module, which is the rastering module. This uh, rastering module will produce a stream of colored pixels that uh, um, uh, will raster all the, all the canvas in front of our camera. We use the same approach, so uh, same recipe, we trade with a VAL and uh, uh, the algebra of the uh, module defined in the service in the companion object, and we just annotate uh, with accessible. Um, and then we have to think how do we um, implement this, uh, this uh, rastering module. Well, we need the two things. We need for every pixel produced by, uh, that uh, uh, is in uh, our canvas, we need to produce the ray that goes out of here. And then for every ray, we need to um, compute the color that is uh, determined for that ray. So we delegate these concerns to two other modules. One is the camera module that gives us um, the ray for a given pixel, and another, uh, the world module that tells us the color for, for that ray. And then, uh, with these uh, two modules that we will define later on, we can bring them in as dependencies in our rastering module and implement our live implementation of the rastering module uh, back by, uh, based on, uh, on these two modules. Uh, so the way you implement, uh, uh, you bring in dependencies is just to uh, uh, bring in two valves uh, whose value is just the service of the modules. And then you can just use them in your business logic. So, here, uh, our stream will be produced by asking for the ray for a given pixel, asking for the color for a given ray, 
we put them, them together, and then we uh, have the stream being uh, producing all the all the color of the pixels. Uh, the next thing is that we can completely test uh, uh, this. Uh, so um, we want to test that, given a world and a camera, the rastering module is producing the right um, color pixels. So first we define this uh, uh, the program on the test, and so we will collect all the pixels together in a list of color pixels. And then we can uh, um, use the um, uh, zero macros and the mocking features of zero test to make the modules we are depending on as mockable. We uh, define the expectations for the, the mocks. So I expect, I say that when I'm asking for the uh, array for zero, for uh, pixel zero, zero, I want to return ray R1. And when I'm asking to the, the world module for the color of R1, it should uh, give me color red. And I want to test that the, the rastering module uses properly its dependencies. So, um, this is our program on the test. We're going to provide this program with a, uh, an implementation of the rastering module backed by uh, the uh, mock modules that we are depending on. And uh, we're going to provide them through this uh, managed environment. Uh, this is a um, use this managed environment, which is uh, similar to the, um, to the uh, uh, resource acquire and, and release. So in the resource <coughs> phase, in the acquire phase, it will load the mocks. And in the release phase, all the mocks will be verified. And so at the end, uh, running this, uh, this test, we can assert that the pixels are what we are expecting. And putting things together, the assertions will be done, and also the mocks will be verified. So if uh, I make a call that I'm not expecting to, uh, to one of the mocks, this will, test will, uh, will fail. So the um, takeaway is to implement uh, every module just in terms of uh, the layers uh, immediately under. And uh, um, this makes uh, the, the reason much more limited and things much, much more manageable. And from this, it will be just modules all the way down. So we will uh, uh, keep adding modules to deal with uh, every small concern we're going we're gonna to have to solve our uh, ray tracing problem. So first thing to do is uh, um, I want to establish the color for a given ray, so I have to see if the ray hits any shape. So I will ask, uh, uh, I will delegate this concern to a world topology module that uh, um, <coughs> determines where a ray hits uh, any shape in the world, and also will determine if perhaps that hit point is shadowed by another shape com uh, with regard to the point light and the light construct. Um, the next thing is to um, uh, see how the ray uh, encounter the shape at the hit point. So we have to calculate uh, these vectors essentially. So one I vector, which is the opposite of the ray vector, the, uh, how the uh, ray gets reflected, and uh, the normal. And, and based on this, um, on the angles of these uh, of these uh, vectors, we are able to um, uh, we will be able to produce different uh, visual effects. And then we have to use these uh, um, vectors to, uh, to produce uh, a color. So uh, this computation is delegated to a foam reflection module that uh, um, will uh, uh, produce uh, an three components of colors. One is uh, the ambient color that comes from the ambient regardless of if the light is on or off. Uh, a diffuse uh, component which uh, uh, yeah, represents how the um, yeah, the, the surface of the, of the shape uh, gets the color, and the uh, reflective component, which uh, uh, take, uh, uh, caters for how the, the shape reflects the, the light source itself. Um, and so uh, with this, we are uh, able to uh, provide a, a, a simple implementation of uh, this reflection module that says, OK, if the um, point is in shadow, just uh, uh, return black. Otherwise, if the point is not shadow, just make it white. This is a very uh, uh, dumb and simple uh, implementation of this. And uh, it's enough to, to write a first version of our ray tracer. And um, uh, so what do I do here? I uh, take the rastering module. I produce the stream of color pixels. I save them in a canvas. 
I, uh, so I have this stream of colored pixels that uh, uh, update the canvas, and I will just uh, uh, drain this, uh, this stream. And then I put, I put things together, and I'm going to write in, in a generic serializer. That can be a PNG serializer or uh, uh, any other uh, image, uh, image format you decide. And this program is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, has in the environment the, the, the requirements that it, that it has. So uh, the first thing to do to run is to uh, try to satisfy all these requirements. So we follow just uh, mechanically what the, the type tells us. And we provide live implementations for each of these modules. But this doesn't compile because we didn't satisfy the transitive dependencies that these modules bring in. So uh, what we do, we just uh, follow the mechanically the, the advice of the compiler. And uh, um, uh, all the transitive dependencies will be bit by bit satisfied. At the end, we end up with a bunch of modules to, um, to provide. But the nice thing is that we can group the modules together. And uh, uh, so these modules are not likely to change for the subsequent uh, steps. So we just uh, create this uh, basic modules group. And we can just uh, use, um, provide with the basic modules together with our uh, uh, done implementation of the reflection module. And this is enough to produce this kind of image. So you see the, the shadow of one object on top of the other. Now we try to make things uh, a bit more realistic. So we introduce, um, uh, we make our uh, reflection module more complicated depending on uh, something that uh, uh, caters for the reflection and another one for the light diffusion. And with this, uh, our shapes get more, uh, more realistic. Um, and you see that uh, all this took was just uh, swapping one uh, dependency for another uh, in the main, so uh, as late as possible. This, uh, this kind of changes. Um, we can make things even more realistic by uh, considering how light itself gets reflected um, by our shapes. And this is modeled by these uh, two parameter, uh, parameters, specular and shininess, that determine how this uh, uh, effect looks like. And uh, so if we introduce a, a light reflection uh, module as a dependency for our phone reflection, then our shapes uh, become, uh, uh, yeah, represent also the effect of the light when when it hits when it hits shapes. And with this, we uh, uh, cope with the fact that the shapes can reflect the light, but not with the fact that shapes can be reflective surfaces themselves. How do we deal with that? Uh, we introduce another module that uh, uh, copes with that, and this will be the world reflection module. Um, what does this uh, module do well? It has to calculate how the world looks like from this, uh, when uh, looked from this uh, uh, point of view. And once that um, uh, color is calculated, so it will uh, add the natural color of, the, of this hit point together with the color of the world as seen from this ray. And adding them together, we will compute the final color of this point. Let's see how the uh, world reflection module has to, uh, has to work. Um, well, if the material is uh, not reflective, it will just uh, return black. So black is a, a RGB 000, so it will not do anything. Otherwise, it must be able to calculate how the world looks like from this point of view, considering all the possible effects. Maybe here there's another reflective component, another reflective surface. And to do that, it needs to depend on the world module itself and use the color for the ray. Um, and return the, the final result. So what we did here, we just introduced a, a circular dependency between the world module and the world reflection module. And um, uh, we can also here provide a, a dumb implementation of the world reflection module that returns black always, regardless of the property of the surface being hit. And uh, so if we have this, uh, uh, world where we have a, a reflective surface, this red is a reflective, this green white is also reflective, but we provide a no reflection module, we see that uh, there is no, uh, no reflection uh, at work here. But as soon as we swap this with a live implementation, we see that the world starts getting reflected. 
And we can do the same for refraction. So this blue ball here is uh, actually a transparent ball. And uh, if we uh, do the same process and uh, introduce a module for uh, uh, refraction, and we uh, inject the uh, implementation that doesn't care about reflection, we have uh, the same image we had before. But as soon as you swap it for a live one, we even uh, consider the effect of refraction on transparent surfaces. So um, we saw that uh, through uh, environmental effects, we are able to build uh, purely functional, testable, and modular uh, applications that uh, don't require uh, knowledge of higher kinds of types or things like that. So um, they also don't model the modules as type classes because there is nothing type class about uh, uh, the modules we are depending on. They're just dependencies. And uh, we saw also how easy it is to uh, exploit the, um, yeah, the mixing of types to group these capabilities. This is something that uh, in Tagus final is very difficult to achieve. And uh, uh, we saw how we can isolate some provided capabilities from uh, what we will provide later on through this grouping, or there are other strategies such as uh, provide some or other things provided by uh, the macro uh, project. And uh, uh, moreover, we are not dependent on, on implicit, so this stuff is uh, much more robust in terms of uh, refactoring, for example. So. Uh, I think this approach is as a very low entry barrier. It doesn't require too many prerequisites. It's uh, pretty mechanical, so uh, we just follow what the compiler tells us. Um, the um, macros make the boilerplate uh, to, to a minimum. Uh, the compiler is your friend in, in using this approach because it, it helps uh, providing the dependencies we didn't uh, uh, provide yet. And it's strong enough to be able to handle even circular dependencies. So um, if you have the chance and you like this, uh, my advice is just try it out and join uh, the Zio Discord channel. It was a, uh, it's a yeah, very welcoming environment where everybody's uh, happy to help. Uh, so um, yeah, that was it. I uh, hope I gave you a good idea about the, uh, this approach. And here is the link to the repo. Try it out. And if you have any suggestions, let me know. Thanks.